It's a very proud moment when we get to welcome back one of our own to the football club and the Burton Albion tonight. I'm very pleased to say Neil Warnock is back on Burton soil. Neil, welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah, lovely to see. You. I never thought we'd see a stadium like this at Burton, so it's a fabulous achievement that Ben, ben Robinson's done and I'm delighted. It's great. You've got some great memories of uh, the uh, the Mulkeep across the road you're talking about. I have, yeah, some FA Cup great, great nights, you know, uh, two or three of them, you know, at that particular time, we'd never seen anything like it really, the full hours of the atmosphere, the, it, it was incredible. I mean, people always remember you, obviously, as manager of Burton Albion, but you were a player. Um, yes. You weren't on. a bad player. No, I just had a problem, with, I broke my arm twice when I was here, it was, they were bad as well, and the second one in particular at Workington, just the, the first game I came back, I never forget it. So it was, uh, it was disappointing, but I, I think it told me to pack in, and uh, and uh, I thought I was determined to try and be a better manager than I was a player. <laughs> so f fortunate I've had a good career. You've had a brilliant career as a manager, and uh, every time Burton fans pick up a newspaper or, or actually watch a TV report, they do look out for you. You know that, don't you? Yeah, it's always special, even, you know, um, Cliff, I've just seen Cliff and the, the, the tea lady who was here when I was there. There's the smashing, the smashing family club, and uh, it's great to see how they've done as well. And uh, I'm sure Gary's going to do a good job this year. And we look back at some of the clubs you've managed since you'd left Burton Albion. Uh, we smiled a little bit when you went to Sheffield United. That was almost a perfect job for you, being a fan. It was, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it was my dream job, number one job uh, at that particular time, and. Uh, it was great, we, you know, we built it up, we had no academy then and with no, the stadium was run down really a bit and we built it up and it was a, you know, from 8,000 crowd on the, the game before I took over to r averaging over 25,500 in the Premier League, it was, it was a fabulous time. I've read through your book, uh, there are some very happy moments in there, there are some sad moments in there, but you just keep bouncing back, don't you? Yeah, I enjoy it, I try and, what I try and do is I try and make the fans, whichever club I'm at, enjoy it as well and... Uh, you know, I think if you look back on your career and where, where, when you've left a club, if you've left them in a better state and, and, and the fans have enjoyed it, I think that's all you can do as a manager and that's what I've tried to do, really. When you saw the Leeds job up for grabs and, and you thought to yourself, uh, should I take this, should I not take this, was there ever any doubt? Well, yeah, I, if I'd have been offered the Wolves job at the time, I would have took that, but <laughs> unfortunately they wanted to wait a few more days, so... Uh, Leeds, you know, just wanted me to take over. My son's there, my grandson's there, my first grandson. Um, and it's a massive club. I mean, it's the biggest club I've ever been at. So uh, I thought the challenge was there. Um, you know, it needed it needed quite a lot of change. And, and and that seems to be what I do over the last few years. I'm almost like the Red Adair of football. It always appears to be something in the news which pitches a manager against a chairman. What's the relationship like uh, at Leeds? Well, my, my chairman, uh, I, you know, I've, I've known him many years, so we, we, we're OK, you know, we're OK. I, I try and get on with getting the signings that I want and working out how I can get them, and, uh, you know, he's a shrewd cookie as well. Uh, but it, that's how it is with most managers. Most managers, you know, you have to have a relationship with your chairman to be successful, and, uh, you know, I've, I've worked and worked to try and get the players I can to, to, um, to give us a chance of being in the right end of the table. When you were both younger, you very nearly worked together. At yeah, we did, yeah. If you had gone from Notts County, who knows? Well, yeah, I just, I didn't feel like it was right at the time. I, didn't, I, I mean, I've done a lot of things uh, where I've let my, 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 my heart rule my head, if I'm, if I'm honest, and... Uh, you know, at the time I felt it was right to stick with the, a group of players that broke, you know, they, killed, they died for me, really. And, uh, it, you know, it was easy then. It would have been easy to go. I've had a couple of occasions where I could have gone to bigger things at times, but I don't regret much about my career. I've enjoyed it. I've had, uh, you know, I've had some, as every manager has, you have bad times and you have to come out of them. And uh, but, but I've had seven promotions. I'd love to get a number eight before I just call it a day. That's the key, isn't it, really? That's, That's the what key. you're after. That's the key, yes. You knock it on the head then and clear off to call me. I will, yes, definitely. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to give Leeds fans something before you disappear and hopefully a promotion. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping they're a great bunch and they've been fantastic all pre-season. And even last year when I came, um, we were losing 7-3 to Forest with 10 minutes to go and they were chanting my name, you know. They, I can't, they can't be any more supportive than that. And you, you don't forget things like that as a manager. So it just makes you want to work that little bit harder to, to put a team out. Going back to your Burton days, Neil, and obviously there were happy days, but I know it's putting you on the spot a bit, but what really stands out for you? Well, the FA Cup run was very, very special. I, I, I see Burton Albion fans at Aldershot 
coming out with the flags, the grandads, the kids, everybody had the flags out the windows of the trains coming down the side of the ground at two o'clock in the afternoon. You know, it was a marvellous, marvellous sight. Uh, young Nigel Sims, who was a coal miner, and, and uh, Stuart Mal, were, you know, we, we, we beat all the shot that day and drew Leicester City, you know, the top flight. So it was a fabulous day, that. But we had some great days in that cup run, um, you know, Eaton Park. Um, and, uh, but also, the first thing I ever won, really, in football was at Main Road. Uh, Ian McLean, you know, um, winger, winning, winning the League Cup. And um, I opened my mouth. It taught me a lesson that don't promise anybody anything. I remember when I came to Burton, I said, I want to win something in two years. And ironically, it was just two years when I won that League Cup. But I thought, don't ever say it again. Put pressure on you. Um, just one final <coughs> question. Um, this thing with referees, <coughs> you know, are they really that bad? <coughs> uh, majority are, yeah. And that's it, is it? <coughs> Yeah, there are some good ones, yeah. Room for improvement. Uh, I think there are, yeah. <coughs> the problem with referees is they're taught by referees and they're marked by referees. So I don't know how they're going to improve unless they bring people who play the game in, involved. You know, and like Shankly says, most referees, they know the laws, they just don't know the game. And unfortunately, you can't see that changing, really. I haven't got a clue who you've got tonight, but good luck with this anyway. Thank you very much.